Good morning. Welcome to day four. I hope all of you are doing well and you're keeping up with your reading, your writing, your math. Um, today I'm going to read a book called I Descent. Ruth Bader Ginsburg makes her mark and she is one of my favorite people that I love to share and read about. You could say that Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life had been one disagreement after another. This is how Ruth Bader Ginsburg changed her life and ours. In 1940, Little Ruth's neighborhood was vibrant with immigrants from Italy, Ireland, England, Poland, and Germany, Jews from Russia, like Ruth's father, Nathan Bader, people, uh, people from different cultures with different holidays, foods, and traditions. But in all these families in Brooklyn, New York, and families everywhere, one thing was the same. Boys were expected to grow up, go out in the world, and do big things. Girls? Girls were expected to find husbands. Celia Amster Bader thought girls should have also had the chance to make their mark on the world, so she took Ruth to the library. On the shelves were stories of girls and women who did big things. Ruth read about Nancy Drew, girl detective. She discovered Amelia Earhart, daring aviator. She learned of Athena, goddess of Greek myths. Here were independent girls and women taking charge. Ruth read her way into this world. Around her, the sweet scent of books blended with savory aromas from the Chinese restaurant downstairs. Delicious. A girl could be anything. Sometimes Ruth and her parents took car trips out, out of the crowded city. As they drove past the hotel in Pennsylvania, Ruth saw a sign, no dogs or Jews allowed. This is how, this is how it was in those days. Hotels, restaurants, even entire neighborhoods announcing white only. Ruth and her family were Jewish. This was prejudice, pure and simple. Now it was Ruth's turn to disagree. She disagreed by never forgetting how it felt to read such words. She never forgot the sting of prejudice. In elementary school, Ruth was excellent in some classes, Lexa excellent in others. Her favorites were English, history, and gym. In those, she did well. But then there was handwriting. Ruth was left-handed. Back then, teachers told left-handers that they should try to write with their right hand. Ruth's right-handed penmanship was so bad, she earned a D on her penmanship test. She cried. Then she protested. Ruth protested by writing with her left hand from that day forward, and it turned out she had quite nice handwriting. Ruth also had a little problem with sewing and cooking. These were her least favorite classes, but girls had to take them. Boys took shop where they worked with their saws and other tools. Ruth objected. She wanted to take shop. She wanted to handle a saw. She didn't get what she wanted. It may have been unfair to girls and to boys, but Ruth was learning that sometimes life was like that. Ruth loved music, especially loved opera. In music class, she lifted her voice in song. This time, it was Ruth's music teacher who objected gently. Ruth simply could not carry a tune. The teacher asked Ruth not to sing out loud during co in chorus. Ruth kept on singing in the shower and in her dreams. She continued to adore opera, too. By the time Ruth was in high school, friends and teachers knew that her as an outstanding student, baton twirler, cello player, and newspaper editor. As graduation approached, Ruth was chosen to make a speech at the ceremony, but she had been keeping a big secret. Her mother was terribly sick. The day before graduation, Sela, Sela Bader died. There was no agreeing with this. There was no disagreeing. This simply was. Ruth did not go to her graduation. She did not give her speech. Still, Ruth knew what her mother wanted. Three months later, she left home to attend college. Not many girls went to college in the 1950s. Ruth made her friends, but she also met girls who excluded Jews from her clubs. She met boys who thought girls should be looking for husbands. And then she met Martin Ginsburg. Marty was tall and funny. Ruth was small and serious. Marty could make her laugh. They fell in love and hatched a plan. After college, they would go to law school, both of them lawyers.
Lawyers, Ruth had learned, could fight unfairness and prejudice in courts. People thought it was a fine idea for Marty to attend law school, but they didn't think Ruth should go. A lady lawyer? People disapproved. Ruth disapproved right back. So did Marty. They got married, they went to law school, and had a baby, Jane. Bruce's law school class had a total of nine women and 500 men. She studied mightily and tied for first place in the class. And yet, as gra at graduation time, no one would hire this brilliant new lawyer. Why not? She was a woman. Men didn't want to work with a woman. She was a mother. Men thought a mother would pay, wouldn't pay attention to work. She was Jewish. Many people were still prejudiced. Three strikes against her, but Ruth was not out. She persisted and persisted. Finally, a judge hired her, and, and she worked like mad for him. After that, one law school hired her, then another. Ruth became one of the few female law professors in the whole country, and she did it with a new baby at home, Jane. Ruth had disagreed and worked her way into being a lawyer and professor, but around her, other women were excluded from jobs. When they did get jobs, they earned less than the men. They were kept out of important roles in courts and in government to make matters worse. The Supreme Court of the United States, the highest court in the land, approved all of this. As one Supreme Court justice had written years before, the natural and proper timidity and delicacy which belongs to the female, evidently unfits it for many occupations of civil life, which means women are unfit for jobs. In other words, women and girls were too shy and too weak to do big things in the world. Another Supreme Court opinion declared woman has always been dependent upon men. Ruth really disagreed with this. You can tell on her face. So Ruth went to court to fight for equal treatment of women. The most important cases went to the Supreme Court. The first time she appeared there, Ruth was so nervous she feared she might be sick. But standing before the nine Supreme Court justices, Ruth imagined them as her student. She, Professor Ginsburg, needed to teach these students who were all men why a person's choices shouldn't be limited just because she was born a girl. Ruth wasn't only fighting for women. When women were excluded from the work world, men were excluded from home life. Why shouldn't a father stay home and care for his children and cook the meals? Why shouldn't his wife run a business? These were fresh ideas in the 1970s. Ruth did not win every case, but she won enough. With each victory, women and men and girls and boys enjoyed a little more equality. Sometimes Ruth and Marty's children received confused looks when they said that their mother argued cases to, in the Supreme Court and their father made the family's dinners. People found this strange. Ruth, Marty, Jane, and James did not concur. They kept on being the type of family they wanted to be. At dinners at the Ginsburg's home were delicious. Marty was a successful lawyer, but also a marvelous chef who had mastered in the art of French cooking. Ruth, her family knew, had mastered the art of burnt toast. Ruth became well known, known as a lawyer, so well known that President Jimmy Carter chose her to be the, a judge in Washington, D.C. Then Ruth became known as a first-rate judge, and President Bill Clinton liked her to be a justice on the Supreme Court. Along with eight other Supreme Court justices, her job would be to decide the most significant cases to answer the most difficult legal questions in the United States. Ruth agreed. In 1993, Ruth Bader Ginsburg became the first Jewish woman on the nation's highest court. She was the second female elected to be on the Supreme Court. In each case that the Supreme Court considers, after hearing from lawyers who argue for each side, the nine justices take a vote. The side that gets the most votes wins the case. The justices agree, write an opinion to explain the court's ruling when Justice Ginsburg votes with the winning side. She wears a special lace collar over her robe, but many times when the Supreme Court announces the decision, Ruth, Justice Ginsburg disagrees. I dissent, she says. She writes her own opinion explaining why, plus she wears a different 
So here are her two different colors that she wears when she agrees and when she disagrees. I dissent, Justice Ginsburg said, when the court wouldn't help women or African-American or immigrants who have been un treated unfairly at work. I dissent when the court rejected a law meant to protect the rights of all citizens to vote, no matter their skin color. I dissent when the court says no to schools that offer American African-Americans a better chance to go to college. Justice Ginsburg can be very convincing. In one dissent, she explained why the court was wrong to rule against women workers who were fighting to get paid the same as men. Congress and the president agreed with her and passed a law to undo the court's ruling. Justice Ginsburg had disagreed most often when the legal views of the justice in Tonin Scalia, but they didn't just complain. I dissent. No, I dissent. They shared their conflicting ideas, each pointed out weaknesses in the other's arguments, and the opinions were written with the two justices had fun with each other. They didn't let disagreements about the law get in the way of their long friendship. So even though they disagreed, they were still able to be friends, which is very important. Justice Ginsburg is now the oldest member of the Supreme Court. Some people have said she should quit because of her age. Justice Ginsburg begs to differ. Are we surprised? No. She works as hard as ever. She exercises in the gym. She never misses a day in court. She attends the opera, gives speeches, and travels. Many have cheered Justice Ginsburg for her persistence and independence. They called her a rock star, a queen, a goddess, a hero. Of course, Ruth Bader Ginsburg isn't a rock star, a queen, or a goddess. But to many, she is a hero. She made change happen, and she changed minds. She cleared the path for people to follow in her footsteps. Girls in college, women in law school, and everyone who wants to be treated without prejudice. Her voice may not carry a tune, but it sings out for equality. Step by step, she's made a difference. One disagreement after another. And I do believe that she is currently still one of the nine Supreme Court justices. She's definitely um, very old. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, she's so she is 87 and still part of the Supreme Court justice. So today, I know that was very long, but that's one of my favorite books to share. Um, you are going to comment, add your comment. I love seeing all your comments. I love that more people are starting to participate. That's so exciting. You guys can also respond to each other if you would like and add on. Um, so I would like you to answer, how did Ruth Bader Ginsburg make her mark and how did she make a difference? Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you're doing a whole bunch of different things. Today, I plan on hopefully starting to paint my kitchen. So that's my activity for today. And I will see you tomorrow.